Hello everyone, welcome to another video and this is part 5 of Linux for DevOps crash course. So let's start. So today I want to start with processes in Linux. So what is a process? A process is any program or an executable that is in running status. Okay. So on your terminal when you run any command, so you are trying to run a program and uh, if that program is in running status, it is called a process in Linux. Okay. It's a very important concept to understand because we'll be dealing with processes a lot when we work uh, in a real time uh, setup. So if you want to list all the processes uh, that is uh, that are being run uh, by the current user on your terminal, you can run a command called PS. So PS stands for processes. Okay. So uh, let's see the command in action on the terminal. So I'm logged into the terminal uh, of my uh, rail line machine. So I'm using AWS EC2 rail line. Okay. So if I run the command PS enter, I can see uh, the list of all the processes being run currently as EC2 hyphen user because I'm logged in as EC2 hyphen user. Okay. So similarly, uh, the other command which is ps space hyphen ef is used to list all processes with all users and full format listing. The meaning of this is on your Linux machine, if you want to list all the processes by all the users currently running, okay. So you can use this command and it's going to give you some additional details as well. So let's see ps space hyphen ef enter. Okay, so you can see all the processes running by all the users. All right, now uh, let's uh, pipe the output using a less command. Okay, so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to uh, pass the output of this command to less command so that I can scroll through uh, the entire output using spacebar on my keyboard. Okay, so now you can see I can scroll through the, uh, the output. Okay, so in this output, there are some fields that you should understand the meaning of. So let's uh, go through it one by one. I've also mentioned it in, in the PPT as well. So PS space hyphen EF output. The first field that we see is UID. So that is the user ID number of the user who started the process. The meaning of this is uh, each process is started by a user. Okay. So and each user has a UID or user ID. So this is the UID of the user who started the process. So it says UID, but you will see the username here. Okay. So you can see uh, if I scroll through the list using spacebar, you can see the processes run by a uh, root user. Then there are some other system users then EC2 hyphen user as well. Uh, it's there. So all the, uh, uh, all the users, who are using the system and running different processes. So it is represented by UID uh, in this command. Okay. Then the next is PID, uh, which stands for process ID. So just like each user on a Linux system has a UID, each process on a Linux system has a PID or process ID, the number that uniquely identifies the process. Okay, so once again, PID, if you see uh, the list, it's, it's, a, it's a number which is given to each process that is running on your Linux system. Okay, next is PPID, the parent process ID number. Okay, so the, uh, the parent process which starts our main process ha uh, also has an ID. So it is the, uh, it is called PPID. Okay. Uh, which is, uh, which, which stands for the parent process ID number. Okay. So uh, this is the field. Next is C. C stands for the processor utilization percentage. Okay. And uh, it is the amount of work a CPU does to perform the tasks given to it. So when you are uh, running any, any process in Linux, each process will be given some CPU so that it can finish processing, right? So the amount of work that CPU does to complete that task or the process is called this field C. It is also called a, a processor utilization percentage. Okay, it is represented by 
C here in this output. Then the next field is S time, which stands for the start time of the process. The process, uh, I mean, the time at which the process started. Okay, if you see it is showing 1509, which means 3.09 p.m. Okay, and uh, I mean, whatever the time which is set on your Linux VM, uh, it, is, it is going to be that time. Then TTY. Remember TTY stands for terminal in Linux always. Okay, so TTY means the terminal. So if you see a question mark as the value of TTY, it means that particular process is not associated to any terminal. Okay, so the meaning of all, the, all these uh, different question marks is this process is not attached to any terminal on the system. Okay then time the amount of cpu time used by the process now when the the cpu is assigned to any process the uh, amount of time that that cpu is being used by the process is called a cpu time okay it is represented by time then cmd stands for command so the command that was used to start that process Okay, so as I as I mentioned uh, at the start of the video, that each program that you run or each executable that you run, okay, uh, if it stays in running status, it is called a process. So the command that was used to start the process is represented by CMD field. Okay, so this is uh, about this command ps space hyphen ef. Then uh, if you want to uh, customize this command, uh, you have the option. So you can use your own user defined format. Okay, this is just one example of it. So let's try to run this command and see the output. How does it look like on, the, on a terminal? So I'll copy this. I'll come out of this output first by pressing Q on my keyboard. I'll clear the screen and I'll type this new command. Okay, so uh, the meaning of this command is I just want to see these three fields. Okay, the meaning of this is I just want to see these three fields out of many fields available uh, in, in this in this ps command okay so now you can see i can see the pid or the process id i can see the start time of the process and i can see that command okay so in this way you can uh, customize this command to your need okay so it's, it's called the user defined format again let's come out of it clear the screen next slide so next is uh, the command that I use a lot in my day-to-day -day work. So it is ps space hyphen ef and then I use a grab command to uh, filter the output. So the meaning of this is, suppose you are, uh, are trying to find something related to a different service. I mean, uh, 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 you're trying to find something related to a particular service on a Linux system. So in that case, I use this command a lot, okay. So here I've taken an example of Tron service. So this is a service which is used to schedule some tasks that are to be run on a particular time. Okay, without you having to manually interact with the with the system. Okay, I mean, we will talk about this, this Tron in our, in our later videos, but I, I've just taken this example so that I can show you the use of ps space hyphen ef command, how, how strong this command is. Okay, so now, for example, you want to check if this Tron service is currently running on the system or not, or, or if, if, it, if it has failed, or I mean, uh, uh, if the service is down. So uh, you, uh, uh, you can use this command to check if any, any process associated with this service is currently running on the system or not, okay? So what I'll do is ps space hyphen ef, which is going to give you uh, the uh, complete output of all the processes from all the users on the system. Then I'm going to pipe it. And once again, I'm trying to grab, I'm trying to filter the output for a particular service. So I just want to uh, check if this uh, Tron service is currently running on the system or not. So in this way, I can filter out the processes related to Tron service. When I hit enter, you will see. So you, so you get two results. So whenever you are trying to check any uh, service status or the process associated with the service you should always check the output in, in, in the output you will see the bin directory that means 
you have to check if the binary of that particular service is running or not and you will always see the output as slash usr slash bin or slash usr slash s bin and then the name of the daemon that is running for that service okay i mean we will talk about i mean what are daemons in in linux in this in this uh, very video but uh, this is the type of output that uh, proves that the service is running okay so this is the type of output that we need now if i take another example ps space hyphen af just to make it clear how to verify if the service is actually running or not so i'll do grab and there's another service called crony d so let's do crony d now I mean, once again if i see the output i can see once again i see one uh, I mean binary running currently so it is slash usr slash has been and then the name of the service itself so this is the way so this is the main process which which shows that this service crony d is currently running on the system okay and then you can uh, uh you know the uh, next uh, output on this command because this particular output is actually related to the command that we ran so when we run this command itself this command also uh, i mean uh, creates a process so this a type of output that you see this um, color is equal to auto it is always related to the command that you just ran okay so i mean you can just discard this output okay and this is the the main uh, i mean output that we were looking for okay so this proves that crony d service is running and uh, this output proves that crone service is running okay so just wanted to show you the the two examples and i use this command a lot in my day-to-day -day work all right and then uh, there are many different versions of this ps command like sometimes people will run this ps aux sometimes people will run ps uh, space hyphen aux okay so there are uh, many versions of this command uh, that you can explore if you have enough time okay so if you do man on ps command you can see there are too many things or too many different options available with this okay so when you have time please explore all the options okay so there are too many things that you can do with this but i mean what i what i showed you is what i use uh, in my day to day work all right let's come out of it by pressing q button all right so next slide is about uh, process control using signals now each process that is running on the on the linux system it can be killed interrupted or or terminated okay by using signals that we pass to these processes so once again there are many different signals that you can pass but i am going to uh, just cover these three which are like the most important ones that you will be using in your in your day to day work okay so so, so uh, let's talk about it so i am going to take an example okay let's just read through this and then in the next slide there are uh, 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 practical ex uh, examples that are going to show these three different process signals okay so each signal will have a number always so a single number two and the name of this signal is called int it is it is for interrupt int stands for interrupt which means suppose there's one process which is in running status and you want to interrupt it or you want to terminate it so there's one way of doing it you can type control c on your keyboard okay and that process is going to terminate or stop so this is the way to terminate the process okay using keyboard interrupt and uh, the single number is represented by number two okay then the next one is nine <clears throat> which is which is for kill so if you want to kill a process abruptly which means like i mean forcefully so suppose you are in a room okay and someone is, is trying to push you physically okay and forcefully so that is called to kill to kill the process forcefully okay so so this is like the same thing now now similarly if you are in in uh, uh, i mean uh, in a room and you want to uh, terminate the process that means you are asking the person to leave the room okay on on request so that is called 
to terminate the process so i mean uh, it is like to uh, to kill the process gracefully but in case of this signal 9 you are trying to force it on on the process so you are trying to kill the process forcefully so this is the difference between 9 and 15 and when you use this this command called kill command and if you don't specify any options there then this 15 is the default option that is taken by the command okay i mean we are going to see it in uh, 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 example in the next slide okay i mean uh, it is not making sense to you but it will uh, when i when i uh, i mean I show you uh, these things on on a terminal okay so these are the three signals out of many signals available uh, with the kill command so basically the command is kill command that we use to uh, i mean pass these different signals to the processes okay so uh, let's see it an example now so uh, next slide so i'm i'm taking an example of this very simple command called sleep command so i'll do sleep space 8000 the meaning of this is okay, there's a command called sleep which means uh, don't do anything for 8000 seconds and then get the prompt back the meaning of this command okay so when i run this command like this so what's going to happen this command is going to attach to my terminal and it will not let me do anything else okay let me show you you see i i will not get my prompt back until 8000 seconds are complete because the terminal is in sleep mode now okay so it's going to sleep for 8000 and then it's going to stop and I, i'll get my prompt back okay to interrupt this signal I can type control C as we have, as we have seen. So control C is used to interrupt any uh, I mean hanging process basically. So whenever you are trying to run any command, any process, any any uh, I mean executable binary. So if if that that particular command hangs or stuck, uh, stuck. Uh, in that case, you can use control C as 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 keyboard interrupt to kill that process. Okay, like this. So I I just I typed control C. I, mean, I, I just I just pressed Control C and uh, I came out of it. Okay. Now, if I want to run this process in the background, that means I don't want this particular terminal to attach to this command, but I still want this command to run. So what you can do is, you can use the same command and just enter ampersand or the and symbol. Okay. So I mean, whenever you add this ampersand in front of any any command, that means that command is going to run in the background, and you will get your prompt back, and you can do any, any uh, other things on the on your terminal. Okay. So now, if I run this command like this, I will get one process ID, and I'll I'll get my uh, this prompt back, which means this command is now running in the background, and your terminal is not attached to this process, so you can run other commands. Okay. So how so how to check if the process is running? so uh, i mean we can use this ps command as we just saw so we'll do ps space hyphen ef and i'm going to grab for sleep so i can see this uh, process that i ran it is still running because it's going to run for 8000 seconds so this is uh, this is in second okay so this command was on the ec2 hyphen user this is the process id okay and this is the command that i ran okay now if i have to kill this because i don't want to wait for 8000 seconds for example i want to kill this right now so what i can do is i can do kill space pid which is this one 15409 hit enter and now if i run that same command again i won't see that in the process because it was terminated you can see the message is uh, terminated sleep 8000 and if you go back to our previous slide you can see i i did not use any any uh, i mean option of of signal i just i mean pass the command directly to the pid so kill space process id when i used it means i am using the default 15 signal which is to terminate the program okay uh, as you can see the purpose it causes program termination polite way to ask a program to terminate and this is what you see here also terminated Okay, now uh, let's try to run that command again. So I'll do sleep and I will use another uh, second 
I mean another count of second I'll use 8080 as given in the example here and I'll do ampersand to run this process in the background now once again I'm going to check for the running processes for a sleep process so if I hit enter I can see the sleep 8080 is still running in the background okay and this is the PID now if I have to I mean kill this process forcefully which means no matter what I just want to kill this process okay so for that what I'll do kill space minus 9 so this is the way to pass the different signal numbers space the PID PID is 15427 for sleep 8000 uh, sleep 8080 uh, process so 154 so this is the way to I mean kill a process forcefully okay so one more thing I would like to tell you try to use this kill command wherever possible to uh, terminate a process gracefully but in case the process still not killed then you can use kill space hyphen 9 to kill it forcefully okay this is how we use it so I mean we will use this command first if it doesn't work then we will use kill hyphen 9 done now if I check the process if it is if it is still running i can see the process was killed this time you can see it says killed so this is the difference between minus 9 which is for killed uh, i mean killing the process and then 15 if, if you don't use any option it is uh, I mean 15 by default which is for terminating the process so this is how uh, you can I mean, pass the different uh, signals to the processes okay so i just want to cover i mean i just wanted to cover these three uh, uh, signals here but there are other signals as well if you do man on kill command you can see there are other options as well so once again uh, there are too many things that, that, that you can do with this command and if you have enough time please explore all the options okay let's come out of it so this is done next slide is system d system and service manager now when you start your Linux system okay so the very first process which starts is called systemd process and the systemd process has a PID of 1 because it is a the first process to start okay so why it, it, it starts because uh, this is the process which starts all the other processes after it okay if you see this program provides a method of activating system resources server daemons and other processes both at boot time and on a running system which means when you start your system it starts this systemd process and then this process starts all the other processes on your linux system all right so it is called systemd system and service manager because i mean after it starts it is it is responsible for managing all the services on your linux system okay so just remember this systemd term okay and this is what is written in, in the definition as well uh, this program provides a method of activating system resources server daemons and other processes both at boot time and on a running system okay we'll see it in in practice on on our terminal in a while okay but, but let's just uh, i mean go through the theory part first so that you can understand the real uh, i mean use of these uh, you know or different resources on on our linux system the second term is daemons so daemons are processes that run in the background performing various tasks generally daemons start automatically at boot time and continue to run until shutdown or until they are manually stopped so daemon just remember uh, whenever you are running any services on a linux system those services are a combination of one or more daemons together okay so daemon is also uh, uh, like a process that keeps running in the background until it is interrupted by some uh, you know uh, something like uh, it can be a manual interruption or it, it 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 can be some issues you know some issues or or some failures that has stopped the daemon okay so uh, daemons are our processes that keeps on running until it is interrupted by something and daemon means the services that are running on our linux system okay so if you see in the uh, uh, next line the service refers to one or more daemons okay and 
the service always have dot service extension okay i mean we'll see it everything in action but i'm just i just want to cover the theoretical part first and to uh, uh, to manage all the demons and services on, on a linux system which is based on red hat uh, you can use this system ctl command so system ctl command is used to manage your daemons and services okay so this is just one example how you can uh, check that so let's go to our terminal now and see all these things in action so by default you get this system ctl command installed so on on your red hat system so if you do system ctl status space then the name of the service or the daemon that you want to check the status for for example i want to check the status of sshd okay one of the most important services in linux ssh stands for secure shell and d stands for daemon so uh, any any service that is running as the daemon will have d as the suffix remember this okay so this is sshd secure shell daemon the meaning of this okay so this is the way you can check the status of any service system ctl then status then the name of the service or the daemon that you want to see the status for so here you can see this is in active running status okay so this is just one example then if you want to see all the services running on your linux system currently so you can do system ctl hyphen hyphen space hyphen hyphen type is equal to service to see the list of all the services running on the linux system okay you can see there are so many services running right now next slide yeah so uh, let's see an example of how you can install a daemon on your on your uh, linux system okay so i'm taking an example of this web server the famous web server called httpd okay so once again if you see httpd d means daemon and http means the web server okay so how how you can uh, I mean, configure a web server on your linux system so first thing is i have to install this package because this httpd package or the software is not on my linux system and to install any package on red hat based systems you can use dnf command okay dnf is, is the package manager so since i'm logged in as a regular user to install any command uh, to install any software i have to become root so i can use sudo because i know ec2 hyphen user is a default uh, sudo user so sudo dnf install httpd space hyphen boy okay so this is the way to install a package called httpd which is the web server So the package was installed. Then you can check the status of the service using system CTL. So I just installed one uh, 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 this web server package called HTTPD. Now, now I want to check the status of this uh, software that I just installed. So I will do system CTL status HTTPD. You can see the status is inactive dead okay so this service is not running currently so i i uh, uh, i was able to uh, download and install the the software but this uh, software is in inactive status so it is not running right now okay so this is the way you can verify that then what i'm going to do i'm going to become root now so i'll do sudo space hyphen su space hyphen enter so i'm logged in as root now now I'm going to, uh, I mean, what I'm going to do is this web server that we have installed, it uses a default file to uh, run its a default site page. Okay. And the default uh, site page uh, by default is stored in slash where slash www slash HTML directory always okay whenever you are installing httpd web server on a red hat system the default index file or the default file that you see on the site is always uh, stored under slash where slash www or www 
slash html directory remember this i mean you have the option to change it but this is the default configuration when you just install the package okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a file under this directory called index.html so index.html is the default file that this web server is going to serve okay so this is the default configuration of httpd web server on the red hat system okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this file now so i'm going to use this echo command so echo command is used to print something in linux so i want to print success success and where i want to print this i can use the redirection operator greater than and I'm going to specify the path of the file so it, it will be where www html and then the name of the file inside this if you remember from our, our, our past lectures this this redirection operator can be used to create the file okay so if this file does not exist it's going to be created by this redirection operator and this is the default file and that is configured for this this web server to uh, run when you uh, uh, open the site page okay so this is the default behavior of httpd web server on red hat then now if i can just uh, check if that file was created so i can do cat then the path of the file where www html index.html and i can see the file was created successfully since I was able to cat the contents of the file. Okay. Now what I uh, what next I have to do? I have to enable the HTTPD service. Now what is the meaning of enabling a service or a daemon in Linux? This means if your Linux system reboots by any chance or manually, after reboot, if you want a particular service or daemon to be in running status by default then you have to enable the service if you enable any any service or daemon that means that daemon is going to be in running status after reboot also you don't have to start that service manually after reboot that service will uh, that service will be uh, started automatically if you have enabled that daemon okay so this is what i am doing using uh, this enable command so let's run that command system ctl enable space the name of the daemon which is httpd in our case okay now if i check the status also once system ctl status httpd and i can see the service is still inactive dead but the service is enabled the preset was disabled which means uh, the status was uh, uh, disabled but now since i have enabled it manually so it has changed to enabled okay next you have to start the service okay so now i have just uh, uh, enabled the service to uh, come back up after this server reboot but i haven't started the service okay so the service is still inactive as if you can see the status so to start the service you can do system ctl start name of the service which is httpd enter and now if i check the status again i can see the service is now active running okay so i was able to enable the service so it is enabled and the service after i run this command system ctl start httpd the service is active running okay so this is the way to enable and start a daemon on a red hat based system using system ctl command okay so I checked the status already. Now, what we can do is we can try to see if our web server is running locally on our, on our Linux system or not. So for that, what we, what we can do is we can do use the curl command. So curl command is used to uh, I mean access a web page from CLI, from command line terminal. Suppose uh, you don't have any, uh, I mean, GUI or graphical user interface on this Linux machine okay which is the case with us right now and you want to check if the web server is running or not after you have enabled and started the daemon so you can use this curl command so curl space local host which means the meaning of this local host is the current machine the the current vm okay on which i am right now the meaning of local host and you can see i i, I mean i i see the status as success which means 
that file which we created that file is, is able to serve using the web server httpd okay because i was able to access it on the cli using this curl command so curl localhost which means i mean if you don't specify any port after localhost it is it is taken as 80 by default and web server httpd runs on port 80 by default remember this okay in the current configuration i mean uh, i mean after after installing after downloading and installing httpd daemon it runs on port 80 by default you have the option to change this port and other configurations but by default it runs on port 80 and if you, uh, if, if, you if you don't specify any port with this localhost uh, command that means you are uh, trying to access port 80 okay this curl ho localhost means curl localhost colon 80 it is going to give you the same output okay now I know that this particular VM Linux VM has a public IP also okay this this has a public IP also remember from our AWS management console if I can go back to my AWS management console and if I click on this instance ID which is for rail line I can check it has a public IP also the meaning of this is if a user has access to internet he or she can access uh, this particular server okay and uh, by default when you install a web server httpd on a linux machine which has a public ip so you can access the web server on its on its public ip itself okay so i'll i'll copy this public ip on my browser so this is my laptop okay so i'm trying to access the web server running on this linux vm on my windows laptop so how you can do that just open your browser and copy the public ip of the machine if it is available only in that case you can access the web server because it has a public ip which means i mean anyone who has access to internet which i have right now i can access the web server running on this machine so i'll just click on this plus sign and i'll paste this ip the public ip and i'll hit enter but it won't work here okay so there's a reason to that if you remember from our AWS management console, uh, we haven't enabled port 80 on our machine. Okay, here, since we are running it, uh, you know, uh, locally inside the VM, we are able to access the default web server page. But on my Windows laptop, uh, the uh, I mean, way to access this web server is to enable port 80 on the Linux VM. So, uh, security group inbound rule okay so how to do that I'll, I'll go back to AWS, AWS management console and this is the instance which I am using and I'll just scroll a bit to security tab security tab and here I will see one security group attached to this particular machine and this particular server uh, let's refresh the page there's some issue I'll just refresh the entire uh, web browser page and now I'll click again on rail 9 and if I just scroll a bit and I, I'll click on security tab all right so this is the name of the security group attached to this instance and on this security group I can see there's only one rule which is allowing only port 22 from anywhere okay so on the inbound rule okay I mean we're going to cover all this as part of our AWS zero to hero course after this but I just want to uh, make a point here that whatever ports you allow only those ports will be allowed to access okay so what I'll do is I'll click on this security group in the new tab and I'm going to add another rule on the inbound interface of the security group so I'll scroll down I'll click on edit inbound rules and I'll add rule I'll click on custom TCP I'll use HTTP so HTTP is the the port for port 80 as I, as I know the web server runs on port 80 and this port 80 is represented by http remember this port 80 is represented by port 80 
so if, if i search http here it's going to uh, just give me port 80 then i can just mention 0.0.0/0 0.0.0/0 save rules now this port 80 has been added on the inbound rules of this instance of, of this instance's security group now if i go back to this page and i just hit refresh i can see the page the default page success the one that i saw on the cli as well okay so in this way i am able to access the default web server page running on the linux machine after i enabled port 80 on its security group okay so this is the way to install and, and configure a web service on a linux vm in the most simplest way of course okay so i mean the real configuration is going to be i mean uh, uh, very complex but this is the way to uh, test a simple web server on a linux machine all right next slide so now we will talk about ssh or secure shell sometimes it's called open ssh secure shell as well so ssh is used to securely run a shell on a remote system okay so for example you want to ssh to a machine so that means you want to run a shell on that machine right so you can use ssh and ssh is the way by which we access most of the linux machines okay so how you can use this command you can use so this is just an example so ssh space username at the rate host name if you have a dns name of the machine you can use the host name or you can use ssh space username at the rate ip address okay so i mean if you have a dns you can use dns if you have an ip address you can use ip address to to ssh to that machine okay so this is the way to use ssh command to log into uh, any linux vm then if you have a private key attached as we have in aws ec2 instances by default so in that case you can use ssh space hyphen i to specify the uh, the uh, a private file that you're going to use to authenticate to the server then the path to the private file and then username and the host name and similarly if you have an ip address you can use username and the right ip address okay so this is the way to uh, log into an instance now let's see it uh, in, in, in action on, on a terminal so here, here i am uh, logged into the same machine and uh, what i'll do is i'll create one user first okay so i'll do user add space j o h and john i'm going to change the password as well pass w d j o h n let's set the password for john user done next i have two commands here okay so this looks slightly complex but it is not actually so this is a command called z command so z command in linux is used to replace a particular text in a file okay without uh, i mean you having to open the file so this is like a shortcut to replace some text in the file with the text of your choice okay we are going to cover this command uh, in our in our later videos in much more detail but i just wanted to show you the the uh, I mean, uh, example of it because it is it is like a shortcut to change some text in a file okay else you can do i mean, uh, I mean you can just uh, try to open the file manually on cli and then just remove the uh, the text and then add add your new text and save and uh, and then save and quit but it, uh, the process is slightly longer so the shortcut to that is just use this uh, z command to replace some text in a file okay so that's why i have used this command here so what i'm trying to do here is i want to enable a password based authentication on this machine if you if you remember if, if i just log out of this machine once if you see when i created this new machine in aws okay when any, any new machine that you create in aws so by default we are able to use ssh key based authentication only right we don't use a username and password if you remember let's just refresh the page
So by default, when you create one EC2 instance, it is enabled for uh, as such key based authentication, right? You have to use the key to SSH to the machine. If I click on this machine here, you can see if I click on connect, I get the option like this, which means I am able to SSH to this machine using the key based authentication. I'm, 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 I'm not using the password here. Okay, I'll just copy the command from here and go back to the terminal and just paste and enter. If you see, I didn't answer the, I didn't enter the password. I was able to log in uh, I mean, because I have this, this private key with me to log into the instance. Okay, so this is called as such key based authentication. So similarly, you have something called as password based authentication in SSH. Okay, but you have to enable that. So by default, we don't have that option enabled. So what we can do is so let's become root for the sake of simplicity. To change that configuration, you have to change your SSH daemon service configuration file. Okay, which is this file slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config. This is a very important file to, to learn. So this is the file which can be used to be to change the behavior of ssh server daemon on our machine. Okay, so if I have to enable this password based authentication. Uh, I, uh, what I have to do is I have to open this file from here if I, if I am doing it manually and then I have to search for password based authentication which I just see now, now and then I have to enable this a password based authentication like this so password authentication should be set to yes and then save and quit right and then to apply the changes i have to do system ctl restart sshd just remember whenever you are making any changes to any daemon service uh, i mean uh, this daemon configuration files to apply the changes you have to restart the daemon itself always so since i am making changes to ssh uh, uh, daemon here which is sshd I made the change to this file. I have to restart the daemon always to apply the changes. Okay, so when I restarted this daemon, the changes are applied successfully on this file. Okay, so if I go back to my PPT, if you see this command, so this command does, I mean, what I just did manually. So this is like a shortcut to do it. Okay, so we just saw how to uh, make changes to this file manually, and now there's there's one more file which we have to modify to enable password based authentication on our SSH service. Okay, so the uh, the uh, the uh, second file that we have to modify is slash etc slash SSH slash sshd underscore config dot d and under this there's a file called 50 cloud in it dot conf. Okay, so this is the most important file for SSH server daemon. But since we are using AWS's uh, EC2 instance based out of Red Hat, we have to modify additional file. So this file is is is, is not available if you are uh, I mean using a Red Hat based Linux system locally on your laptop. So in that case, you you don't have to modify this file, this 50 cloudinit.com file. But since we are using AWS EC2 instance. Uh, I mean, we have to modify this file as well. Okay, remember this part. So the most important file for SSH is always slash etc slash ssh slash shd underscore config. Okay, but in this case, we have to modify this file. So I'll just uh, try to run this command now on the terminal. Sorry, it didn't copy correctly. So I'll copy again. So here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to enable password authentication to yes using this Z command instead of me opening the file manually and making the changes saving and quitting. So I'm trying to make this change quickly. 
okay once again i made the change to uh, the configuration file of ssh so i have to restart the daemon so now the password based authentication is enabled on both the files okay so now uh, i mean i mean why did uh, i do this because i want to log in to another terminal on this linux vm using the john user which we just created a little while ago so i'll click on this plus sign i'll do i'll do ssh space username which is john at the rate the public ip or the public dns of the linux system so i'll go back to my aws management console i'll click on the instance id and i'll copy the public ip or the public dns it's up to me it's i mean uh, we can use any of it so i'll use the public ip here go back to my terminal and copy so in this way i am trying to log into the same machine using john user and not ec2 hyphen user which is the default user okay and i have also enabled uh, the password based authentication so if i remember the password for john user i will be able to uh, uh, log into the machine it's going to ask for the password so first it's going to ask for the fingerprint then we will come to this a little uh, in a little while so there i have to type yes enter and then i have to enter the password for john user j o h n so now i am able to log in to the same machine using john user so this is the way to configure ssh okay i mean uh, for any any a new user on your uh, linux system so this is the way to use ssh uh, this configuration file to create a new user and then allow him to to uh, i mean uh, access the machine okay so i just wanted to show you this example once all right next slide yeah ssh known underscore hosts file so this is again a very important file to learn whenever you are learning ssh so let's just read this entire stuff and then we will see it in practice on our terminal okay so the first time a user connect to a server using ssh the ssh command stores the server's public key in the user's home dot ssh known underscore hosts file every time the user connects after that the client makes sure it gets the same public key from the server by comparing the server's entry in the home this is represent this is called home dot ssh known underscore host file to the public key the server sent the meaning of this is i'll i'll show you the meaning of this uh, so okay one more uh, sentence is left so if the keys do not match the client assumes that the network traffic is being hijacked or compromised and breaks the connection okay uh, we'll talk about this uh, so let's just see it in action first the meaning of this file known underscore host file the meaning of this file okay so to check that you have to create one new ec2 instance it can be any linux operating system and then you have to ssh to it from your local mobile xtrem terminal and then monitor the entry in this file home dot sh known underscore host file so i'll go back to my AWS management console and you can see to save some time i've already created one another instance okay so i mean you have to do the same just create one more instance and then try to ssh to it in another terminal on your mobile xterm terminal this one so this is the new machine so i'll click on the instance id i'll click on connect button here and i'll copy the example command from here and then i'll open another, another terminal i'll enter the command okay uh, uh, but i will not ssh right now uh, let me just log out of john user as, as john user i'll all right so the meaning of these sentences these five sentences is whenever you are trying to access any new instance or server from your client application which is mobile xterm in my case okay whenever you are trying to do so what will happen one entry will be made to your um, uh, this mobile x terms known underscore host file of that new server okay so let's see what this file currently holds so i'll use this command tail hyphen f to see the live 
uh, I mean logs of this file. So it is home dot ssh and known underscore hosts. So you can see uh, some entries into it already because I have uh, I'm logged into different machines. I mean over uh, I mean past few days. So whenever I try to access any new machine from my mobax term terminal one entry is made in this file okay so that it can identify the machine okay now if i just try to access this new machine from my mobax term terminal right now so one more entry will be made after this okay so after i hit i hit enter I mean, I will, I will get one, uh, this warning to accept the fingerprint. The meaning of this is, do you trust this machine or not? If you do, you have to type yes. So as soon as I do yes, you can see one entry was made to this known underscore host file on my mobile term terminal. Here, see? And you can see the IP address 50191271. The new machine 50191271. So this means when I entered, when I uh, uh, logged into this new machine, one new entry was made in this file, which is home.sh known underscore host file. The meaning of these five lines is this. Okay. So why it, it, it is being done? Because I mean, uh, uh, every time the user connects after that, the client makes sure it gets the same public key from the server by comparing the server's entry in the known host file to the public key the server sent. So just to identify that this server has been used in the past. So one entry is uh, saved in the known underscore host file of your client application. Okay, just remember this part because this will be used a lot when you're working. In a real time setup so you should know the meaning of this known underscore host file okay and then if the keys do not match the client assumes that the network traffic is being hijacked or compromised and breaks the connection so this is the beauty of ssh okay if that that the that key is that is a different from what it was earlier so that will mean that the server has been compromised okay so that is the use of this file known underscore host file so i'll just come out of it now all right uh, next slide key based authentication which we just spoke about but uh, i mean we'll see one more example of it which we use a lot a lot in our in our day-to-day -day work in our day-to-day -day operations okay so apart from password based authentication users can authenticate SSH logins without a password by using a public key authentication. Okay, so uh, when we create any new EC2 instance, as I mentioned, you get this public key authentication enabled by default on all instances. Okay, so this is called a private public keys scheme. So just remember the public key which is attached to the instance is like a username, and the private key which is with you it's like a password so it should be kept secret and secure so what i mean is on my uh, this mobile term terminal i have this file called uh, let me log out of this uh, server here and if i just open the login command if you see this file i have saved on my mobile term terminal so this is like a password so i mean you should never i mean share this file with anyone okay so this is like the password. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to log in to this server using EC2 hyphen user username. And I'm trying to authenticate myself using this key file, which is the private key file. And the corresponding public key, okay, for this private key is already attached to this machine. Okay, so whenever I'm trying to log in, the public key on this machine is being matched to the uh, this private key and only then I am able to log into the server if this private key does not correspond to the public key on the on the machine on the on the uh, this VM then the access will not be granted and and I will get this uh, I mean access denied message 
सो दिस इज कॉल्ड एस एस एच पब्लिक की ऑथेंटिकेशन मैथड ओके सो दिस इज कॉल्ड की बेस्ड ऑथेंटिकेशन एस एस एच दिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड ओके सो नाउ टू टू टेस्ट इट आउट वट वी विल डू इज ऑन सर्वर टू विच इज दिस न्यू सर्वर so on 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 this new server what i'll do is i'm going to create my own key pair okay and then i'm going to uh, try to authenticate with my own keys instead of aws given keys how to do that let's see it in action so this is uh, the server 2 okay okay i i i i beg your pardon what i'm going to do is i'm going to create the key pair on the server 1 the original server which i have and then i'm going to use those keys to ssh to this new server without a password and i'm 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 going to use my own keys and not the ones given by aws okay so to do that what i have to do is first i have to disable uh, i mean first i have to enable the uh, this password based authentication on this new machine okay because uh, uh, right now it is uh, uh enabled for uh this key based authentication using aws given keys but i don't i don't want that so i'm going to enable this password based the based authentication first so that i can copy my uh this key pair to this new server and then i'm going to use it to authenticate to it okay so once again i'm logged in as ec2 hyphen user on this new server and i'm going to modify the value of this password authentication to yes in this main configuration file which is slash etc slash ssh slash sshg underscore config file so i can use this command as a shortcut i am using sudo because i am logged in as ec2 hyphen user and i have to be root while running this command so after running this command uh, i have enabled password authentication in the file now to apply the changes i have to restart the daemon the ssh daemon so i'll do sudo system ctl restart sshd the changes are applied okay now i will create my own key pair on the new server sorry on the on the old server on the original server and then i'm going to use those key pair to log into the new server okay how i can do that so to generate this key pair of a public key and private key of your own you can use a command call ssh keygen or ssh hyphen keygen command okay okay so this this keygen stand for key generation so on server 1 so this is a server 1 and this is server 2 let's close this one to avoid any confusions so so right now i i i uh, when i have two terminals so, so this is for server 1 and this is for server 2 on server 1 i am going to create a key pair So, so uh, let's just become uh, this regular user here. I don't want to be root on this one. I mean, I, I mean, uh, I don't need to be root to do this uh, task. So I'm going to become EC2 hyphen user on this server, on the first server. And now I'm going to run SSH hyphen keygen enter. And I'm I'm going to get some prompt, but we don't have to worry about that. Just keep hitting enter until you get your prompt back. Enter. here uh, since i already created so i am getting the option to override so i am going to override the already existing key pair so i'll type y enter just keep hitting enter enter until you get your prompt back okay so what this uh, command did this command created two files okay in this users home directory dot ssh directory so uh, if i check i am under slash home slash ec2 hyphen user in this directory there will be one more directory called dot ssh so under this uh, directory in the users home directory if i do ls i will see two files now id underscore rsa and id underscore rsa dot pub so these two files are created when you run this key gen command ssh key gen command creates these two files so this is the public key and this is the private key so this is like the username and this is the password to uh, log into any server okay how to use these two keys to authenticate uh, and uh, and uh, log into any server you have to uh, use this command called ssh copy id command which means i am trying to copy 
the public key from this server to the new server okay when i do ssh copy id then the username of the uh, the second server which is ec2 hyphen user at the rate the public ip of the second server of the new server so i'll go back to this and i'll copy the public ip the public ip is this copy paste okay so I, I, I would like to re repeat myself what I did. I'm logged into the first server, the original server. I created key pair, sh key pair of my own using sh hyphen keygen command. When I, run this, when I run this command, inside the user's home directory, under dot ssh directory, I get two files created, id underscore rsa, id underscore rsa dot pub. So these two files can be used to sh to any machine using key based authentication without the use of username and password so how to do that after you generate these files using keygen command you have to copy the public key to that new server where you want to ssh so to do that i can use this command ssh copy id command which is going to copy this id underscore rsi dot pub file from here to this new machine the second server okay so i am specifying the username and the uh, and the ip address of the new new machine the second server okay so if you remember i uh, uh, enabled the this password based uh, authentication on this new server so i i did not change the password so let me change the password for ec2 hyphen user so i can do pass wd enter Okay, I'll do that again. Okay, let me become root. Uh, I think I cannot change the password uh, logged in as EC2 hyphen user because this is the default user in AWS. And I think there are some limitations to if I can change the password or not. So I'll become root for this activity. And now I'll try to change the password of EC2 hyphen user using passwd command. right so let's enter that same password here and if you see after i enter the password of ec2 hyphen user of the new server i get this message number of keys added one which means this command was run uh, i mean this command finished successfully and uh, it was able to copy the public IP, sorry, the public key from this server to the new server. Now, if I have to SSH it to this uh, new server without ID and password, without username and password, and using this key based authentication, what I can do is I can run this command. So I'm doing SSH EC2 hyphen user at the rate the public IP of this machine which is this one and this time it won't ask me for the password see so now i'm logged into the new machine you can see uh, the ip address uh, the private ip address of this machine 172 31 24 33 uh, 172 31 24 33 which is the ip address of the new machine so in this way what i did i created my own key pair and i was able to uh, use it to ssh to another machine without the need of id and password so this is the way to configure key based authentication using your own sh key pair to access to the new machines or the the remote machines okay all right uh, our last slide which is to customize ssh service configuration file so as i mentioned the most important file related to ssh daemon server 
uh, is slash etc slash sh slash shd underscore config so if you open this file have to be root so i'll do sudo vim slash etc slash ssh ssh slash ssd underscore config if you open this file there are other i mean uh, there are various options and different type of configuration that you can do okay but i'm going to talk about a few which are really important for example on a particular linux server you want to disable root login at all times so there's one uh, this option called permit root login okay so uh, uh, this should be set to no okay so let's just try to find that permit root login as you can see this 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 permit root login if you just enable this i mean uh, so right now it is it is commented out so if you uh, use this option and set its value to no that means root user cannot log into the server okay similarly if you have i mean if you want to enable uh, this password based authentication we just we just saw so you have to ensure that this password authentication if i type password authentication you can see you have to enable this option this password authentication and it should be set to no to disable any password based authentication on this on this machine okay similarly you have other different options as well if you see there are so many options and uh, i mean if you have enough time you can always uh, 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 i mean check the different options available in this file to change the behavior of ssh a service daemon on this machine okay so i just wanted to I mean, uh, make a point here that this is the most important file when it comes to uh, uh, ssh uh, uh, daemon and you can modify the behavior of this service to suit your needs okay so that's all about it so that's all about sh that i wanted to cover in this session uh just one more thing before i go i think here when i was trying to change the password of ec2 hyphen user let me log back in as ec2 hyphen user and I was, I was i was getting this message okay so i i looked at this uh, this message again uh so i'll try to change the password i think i should be able to change the password but i wasn't able to so let's try it once again with a different password No, I'm not able to. Okay, I just wanted to see if I'm able to uh, change the password using a different password. So I think there's some issue with it. Since it is a default user and AWS sometimes limits, uh, you know, some of the functions that you can do with the default user. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm assuming it. Okay, but, but anyways, uh, I just wanted to see if I'm able to change the password uh, or not. So I'm getting this message. Anyways, I just wanted to see if I'm able to change the password or not. All right, so that's all I wanted to cover in this session using, uh, so I, I covered uh, processes, then the process control signals, uh, and then I, I covered uh, system D service, and then I explained about daemons and services and how to use the system CTL commands, and uh, I also spoke about how you can configure a simple web server HTTPD on a Red Hat system, and I spoke about uh, SSH uh, 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 service basics, how you can SSH to the machine, how you can create your own key pair and use it to SSH to any remote machine. All right, so uh, that's all I wanted to cover. If you have any doubts, anything, any uh, any questions or queries, you can always reach out to me. I mean, you can put it in, in the comment section and I'm going to answer all your queries. All right, so uh, that's all for today. I hope you liked my video. If you did, please hit that like button and uh, share it with others and subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks a lot guys and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.